LNT reported a strong set, 19% growth in revenues, 45% growth in profit, of course, because of an exceptional. It was an all-round beat versus market expectation, especially on EBITDA and net profit, which came a good 200 to 400 crore above market estimates. The high point is not only has the order book grown by 72% in Q2, the company has said it will do better than its guidance on both revenues and order book. The only low point that one could see was that it has lowered its margin guidance slightly uh, by about half a percentage point. Mr. R. Shankar Raman, whole time director and chief financial officer at Last Night to Bro with us. Uh, good morning, Mr. Shankar Raman. Always a pleasure having you with us. Uh, well, if I may start with the guidance on uh, order book. I mean, already in the first two quarters itself, you have done something like uh, one uh, I think 1.2 lakh crore or 1.23 lakh crore. And uh, your, uh, you know, even if you took a 10 to 12 percent uh, order book growth, it will come to just about 1.93 lakh crore compared to last year. I mean, you're going to beat your order book by a huge margin, it looks like. Can you give us a number? If it's not 10 to 12, is it 15? I mean, what's the number? Uh, good morning, uh, Lata. I think. Um... Uh, we we are in a good spot, fortunately, at the half year level. Uh, we seem to have uh, uh, been on the right side of most of the important orders that we were targeting, and the programs were also sufficiently large. Uh, these are unusually large, especially the orders that we have won in Middle East. These are not the normal uh, sized orders that uh, feature our order inflow. So, to that extent, uh, these percentages will have to be seen in the context of these large order wins and that are very, very lumpy, exceptionally lumpy. But having said that, having said that, I think uh, uh, we uh, reported an order inflow of uh, 2,30,000 crores in FI23. And when mm -hmm. we started the year, we thought possibly 10 to 12% growth over that, which would mean about 2,55,000, 2,60,000 crores worth of orders that we should be able to pursue in the current year. Now, as we have closed September, we are close to uh, uh, 1 lakh crore in terms of orders. Now, out of this uh, 2 lakh 60,000 crores, about 60,000, this is a consolidated number I'm speaking about. So about 60,000 crores goes out of the services uh, uh, orders that we get. So if you keep that aside, the projects and the manufacturing orders that we need to win for the year is about 2 lakh crore. Now, we do think that looking at the prospect pipeline that is ahead of us, and we think it's about seven, eight lakh, eight and a half lakh crore worth of prospects that we have ahead of us. Uh, we we think that uh, we will um, outperform uh, the order inflow guidance uh, quite handsomely. Now, how much percentage, etc., depends a lot of events that are ahead of us. Now, the state elections are getting rolled out. Then the union election is due. Uh, as I mentioned to you in one of my earlier conversation, we had approached this year as a nine-month year or a 10-month year. We were never looking at year as a 12-month year because of this disruption uh, that was likely to, to come up. Uh, we don't know the date set, so I, I'm not in a position to put a percentage point number uh, to say mm -hmm. that uh, in 12%, it will be 15% or 18% okay. or 20%. But what, well, I, can you, mm -hmm. no, what I can you, tell you... Sorry, what I'm telling you... I'm, yeah, go ahead, sir, sorry. But, what I am only mentioning to you is that looking at the prospect pipeline, if we continue to win 20% uh, of what we bid for, as we have been doing so far, there's a very good chance that we will be much, much better than the 12% guided. Okay. No, sorry to interrupt. Why I was interrupting you is that you will have a better handle on execution for sure. Yes, you. I can understand your uh, hesitation to give a strong number for order book. Execution also has been much better than expected. I mean, revenues first quarter grew by 34%, second quarter by 19%. So why are you not giving us a slightly stronger number on revenue growth guidance? You said it's better than 12 to 15. What will that be? 20? 18? See, uh, uh, Lata, I, I appreciate uh, your keenness in getting a number out of me. Uh, but I, I must mention to you that uh, uh, I, I would like to work to maximize whatever that we can. Because look, what are we trying to do? We are trying to execute 4,50,000 crores worth of orders yes. and in as quick a time as possible. Normally, our projects are three-year time frame. And the projects are sequenced not in a linear manner. 
there are procurements which actually come in as a lumpy revenue every now and then and there are execution on the ground so the way each of the projects and we have more than 1000 sites in which all these projects are being worked both in india and overseas now each of the sites will have their own dynamics of uh, 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 of uh, progress and the revenue is a function of that dynamics my sense tells me that uh, uh, when i say outperform i am not saying that instead of 12 to 15% we would be 16% or there about i think there is a good chance that we will handsomely outperform this okay okay i wish i knew your word handsomely since you me mentioned it both for order book and uh, revenues but good to hear that let me come to margins where you have lowered now i don't know your co margins for q1 and q2 but i do know the margins that you declare in your pnl which is q1 was 10.2 and q2 is substantially higher one percentage point higher almost at 11% so the margins that you report in your pnl have improved substantially uh, you do why are you lowering your margins guided uh, let me let me break it up for you uh, lata because the ones that we report in pnl has the benefit of other income uh, as well as in in the quarter that just ended we had the benefit of monetizing a portion mm. of the land park of hyderabad metro and which gave us almost 500 crores of profits so all of this come into play when you look at the margin as you see in the financial statements but to take strip those away and look at the core operating margins we are uh, uh, we reported uh, excluding services because they don't really fit into this definition of margin that we speak about projects and manufacturing business had a margin of uh, 7.4% in quarter 1 and that margin stays at 7.4% in quarter 2 uh, we had uh, closed the previous year fi23 at about 8.6% and at the beginning of the year our effort was to take this 8.6% up by 30 or 40 basis points so we were targeting that as we started the year at the midpoint of the year we have stayed stable at 7.4 i'm trying to break this up even for my organization as two step process we mm. first need to get to about 8, 8 quarter to be able to get closer to that target that we have. And progressively through the next two quarters, we need to work hard to move the 7.4 higher and as close to 9 as we guided as far as possible. But looking at uh, the way uh, things are placed today, uh, an assessment of that situation gives me an indication that we, when I say 9, it becomes a definitive number. Our sense tells us that we could be anywhere between eight and a half, which is what we reported last year, and nine, which is the target for the year. I am not changing the goalpost. I still want to endeavor to get as close nine. to nine as, but it could be anywhere between eight and a half and nine. So in a way, it's not lowering; it's actually uh, uh, redefining the okay. band that Fair I spoke about. Earlier. Fair enough. That that I think will make the market happy to hear that. You know, you said something about chip manufacturing, but you didn't elaborate in the con call. Can you tell us more? What are you all exactly planning to do? And by then? Yeah, you know, uh, sure. But as a part of our Lakshya uh, 26 plan, which is a five-year strat plan, uh, we had committed ourselves to create alternate streams of business revenue profits for the company. We know that we will continue to do well on the core businesses of infrastructure manufacturing that we do. So the next five years, as we saw then, was more of the same thing and that looked pretty assured and the last two, two and a half years performance has actually validated that stand that we will continue to be at forefront of all these CapEx programs mm. that are rolled out both in India and Middle East. What new and what is it that we need to do to define future? So when we look at those opportunities, two things caught our attention and we deep dived into it. One was this whole energy transition. I think it is very, very important for the sustenance yeah. of the planet that we get into le less carbon emitting sources of energy. World has to continue to grow to feed the growing population. So I don't think we can trade growth with climate. We need to find out how climate and growth can coexist. And for that, energy transition is important. We chose hydrogen as a stream okay. to work on. And in hydrogen, we are reasonably confident given our EPC track record. If somebody wants to put up an hydrogen generating plant, we, are, we have the technical capability to do it. And hopefully, sure. we'll have the cost comp. When it comes to product, electrolyzer is a very important piece of technology for this hydrogen manufacturing. It's a global product. We have tied up with McPhee France to get that electrolyzer manufacturing done. By the end of this current fiscal, 
we should be able to have our first electrolyzer out and our assumptions and uh, all that will be validated when we look at the finished product as to how relevant, how cost competitive and how global it is. Now that is insofar as electrolyzer is concerned. The other area that India has enormous potential is the whole area of semiconductor. As you will know, semiconductor has two, three links in this value chain. One is the design, which is the core of the yeah. semiconductor. Then is the fab uh, manufacturing, which is the, the forging, for shop facility, et cetera, the chip making. And then the third is, of course, the testing uh, and, uh, and packaging. Pack packaging, yeah, that's the third marking and packaging. Now, we looked at this value chain. We felt that uh, we may not have enough in our tank to be able to compete on the fab manufacturing because we have to compete the Taiwanese and the Chinese and the Koreans, etc. And it would call in for a lot of investments on a fast changing technology. So, we decided that we will get into design, and hence our effort over the last six months has been to find out as to what area we can play in in design the chip designing market is about 27 odd billion dollars uh, in india today and if i look at uh, reports from uh, you know people like mckenzie etc it gives us an impression that this market could double by 2030 so it was important for us to have a play in that development consequently chip design is something that we chose in chip design our technology services subsidiary lnt technology services already have been working with customers on chip designs and the engineering related to it. So there is some amount of domain expertise available with us. Now, what we are trying to do is looking at all the global majors who come to India to set up their design labs. Uh, India, uh, much of designing that happens on chips happens out of India. If India has such talent pool, why not LNT participate in that and get a piece of it? So that is the reason why we have allocated about $100 million to be spent over the next three years in putting up design labs, both maybe in places like Bangalore and maybe at Chennai, and uh, get into designing of chips. In chips, we will focus on chips that are used for automotive industry and industrial application. Chips are used for several things, every gadget, but we have narrowed down on these. Yes. Okay. Good to hear that, sir. Uh, the commercial guys have a gun to my head asking me to go to a break. Can you give me a monosyllabic answer? When the Hyderabad Metro divestment, 28, 29, 30? Yeah, I think 28 is a, is a 27, 28 is a, is a good uh, number to target. Work with. All right. Uh, we'll ta I'll take a rain check from you for a more detailed discussion some other time. Thank you very much, Mr. Shankar Raman, and festive greetings as well to you and everyone at LNT. Thank you, and to you and the viewers. Thank you. We have to wrap up on Bazaar. Chartpast is up next.